This is for Optimization Methods in Engineering MEMS 5001. My name is Clayton Harp. This is the Optimization of Drone Frame Design final presentation. This is the problem scenario. Drone frames need to be very light and strong enough to withstand a crash and be cost effective to the manufacturer not based on material cost but cutting time. The solution is to develop an optimized design volume that can be used as a baseline to design aesthetically pleasing frames while maintaining strength or use the design volume to design the cheapest frame by minimizing the perimeter slash weight of a frame while maximizing the strength during crash. This is important right now because there are an abundance of quadcopter designs that vary between $30 to $300. Some frames are very strong where others are not and sometimes price does not correlate all the time with strength or weight. Racing, pilots only generally care about the weight of the frame as it increases their performance and also battery life. However, for the general populace, strength is the major contender as they don't want to generally spend a lot of money on replacement parts. To solve this to find the optimum frame design, I used Hyperworks in a topology optimization problem. The design I used was similar to the majority of drone frame designs out there. It's a 200 by 200 square plate, which yields a 226 millimeter diagonal from hole to hole of the motor mounts, and this is typical amongst racers. The parameters I used and assumptions are as follows. I assumed that a typical crash in a race would be around 40 miles per hour. The total mass of the quadcopter was around 4 to 450 grams, all up weight, which includes the battery. I used a composite material with just basically a general zero ply with a G of 70,000, a new of 0.1. The model was built in the same way as the tutorials that we used in class in the Z X plane. My mesh size was 1.5 and the nodes that you will see, um, the battery nodes were 10,000 newtons each. The motor nodes were 4,800 newtons each. This is my constraint force model. As you can see, I simplified the design a little bit to mi mimic more of a drone frame design. The motor nodes are the four outer holes of the part, whereas the four inner ones are the battery nodes. And below you can see the constraint DOFs 1, 2, and 3 on the left, and then 2 and 3 on the right. I ran it in two scenarios where one was a frontal impact and one was also in a 45 degree impact where it only impacted one of the legs. For comparative purposes, I also ran this test against a typical racing frame. This is very similar, as you can see on the screen, to a Shrek V2 from Show Me What You Got. The starting volume was 26,000 millimeters cubed. These are the results of running the topology optimization through Hyperworks showing a max X displacement and a frontal impact of 32.1 millimeters and a side impact from 45 degrees of 17.6 millimeters X displacement. Now running through the rest of these pretty quickly, you can see that there's a general pattern regardless of thickness. I did vary the thickness from one millimeter to two millimeters to three millimeters, but in each case in the frontal and side impact tests, it showed a very similar pattern. Using a photo editing program overlaid all of the results onto one image to create the optimized frame design. Using the image, I went into a CAD package program and created the volume. However, as you can see, the optimized volume is much larger, about 70% increased as compared to the typical drone frame design. These next three slides show the optimized frame design and topology program. As you can see I can take an additional volume off. However what you can also tell is the displacement has been greatly reduced. So even though the weight increased about 70 percent I also increased the strength of the frame by 85 percent if not more in certain scenarios like the frontal impact. And you can tell from the X displacement and frontal impact, I went from 32.1 millimeters to 1.2 millimeters. And in the side impact, I went from 17.6 millimeters to 2.6. This frame design can be used as a go-by to produce other frames or aesthetically pleasing ones. And if certain aspects of the frame are not used, then it's understood that there will be a degradation in strength. Even though right now this is a success and that I can actually produce frames with this, further work can be done, such as reducing the volume even more, as shown in the optimization of the last frame design. Also, I would like to do an exact representation of a model and see how that differs as well.